So this is our final session of the day for Big Talk from Small Libraries 2019. Um, this right now is Betsy Evans, who is from the Sul Ross State University in Alpine, Texas. Uh, FTE about 2400. About, just about, yeah, on a good day. Yeah, on a good day. And she's going to talk about graphics workflow and doing some branding and things for your library in all different ways with some really cool software and things that I have used, you know, looking at her other uh, show notes here, our description. So I'm just going to hand it over to you to tell us how we can do some great marketing for our libraries. All right. Well, I, I do um, have to admit that now that I've been working on this presentation, that it's uh, it's going to be a show that this is a big work in progress. Um, but I'll just get started and we'll, we'll kind of work through it together. Um, so like Krista said, my name is Betsy Evans and I'm the education and outreach librarian at the smallest public university in Texas. And uh, for those non-Texans, in the room, you know that Texas is a very large state. Um, we, I don't know, Texans have a thing about us. We like really think that everybody knows a lot about Texas. So my apologies in advance. Um, but I'll, I'll share more details about Solras in our small town. Um, but I'll pr first tell you that what I'm presenting today is an ongoing case study um, that revolves around something that all of us are familiar with as library people, uh, and that's doing more with less. So it's inevitable for librarians to need and to want to do more with less because our budgets are always decreasing and there never seems to be enough people power to accomplish all of our big, amazing, bright ideas. Uh, and it's kind of sad that that's become a cliche in the library world, but that's the way it is. Um, so I've been in my position at Solras for about two years, um, and our universities had some some issues with enrollment. Um, I said 2,400 on a good day, and that's definitely accurate. Um, last fiscal year, we had to cut two million dollars from our budget, um, so we are definitely in a time of pulling out all the stops to increase enrollment because a more enrolled and engaged student population means a happier and healthier university. So part of this initiative is rebranding, um, but as a university, we don't have an official public relations officer or even a very well-established creative services team. Um, so it's been a rough few years, um, but luckily, um, and you can see in the slide, I live in a really beautiful place near Bigman National Park, and I really love my library colleagues, and I love our mission. Um, our university serves many first-generation college students, and you know our goal is just to instill lifelong learning in those students and in our faculty and staff and in the greater Alpine community. So we, as a library, um, and those other academic librarians out there probably agree, I think libraries tend to be the heart of, um, of a good, thriving university. So instead of letting myself get totally burnt out with all this negativity, um, I looked inwardly and thought about how I could increase efficiency in my own workload um, and refine my process and my workday so that I could focus on the big part of my job as education and outreach librarian, which is the information literacy aspect. Um, and one way I realized I could do that was to cut down on the time that I spent creating promotions for our services and resources. Oop, pardon me. Um, so in, in an attempt to do that, I was just trying to streamline and schedule content creation. Um, yeah, so I didn't skip ahead too soon. So the goals for today then are, um, I'm gonna share how I defined really the big problems that I'm having in my own workflow and set about fixing those problems. Um, I found tools that I've shared that I'll share along the way. Um, and definitely I will show you my graphic creation and digital asset management in Canva and in SharePoint, which I do understand that SharePoint's um, not something that everybody has access to, but there are other digital asset management type of, um, you know, like cloud storage that's available for free. Um, and most institutions have something like that. Uh, I've 
continue to find areas where I need to um, figure out solutions. So I'm just going to say it a bunch of times. This is definitely a work in progress. Um, but, you know, most importantly is that I've really adjusted my attitude, especially looking inward during this um, time of trying to improve my workflow and remembering that working in any organization is just thinking about things and sometimes thinking big is about really just thinking small and refining um, and just moving forward. So if there's one thing that you take away from today, from me talking, um, it's that, you know, we all have really good work to do as librarians and looking towards other librarians is so helpful. Um, and that's why I really value opportunities like this. And I've used a lot of past talks from this specific conference to jettison ideas forward in this library. Um, so even today during the lightning round, I learned a few more tips from Courtney Hicks and Jennifer Shimada for marketing and working smarter. Um, and those things are going to apply how I move forward with this workflow. Um, I'm going to share my process with you in a traditional case study format. So I'll define some of the problems, provide more background and context, and then I'll transition into the ways that I'm trying to solve those problems and provide some recommendations. And then, of course, we'll look to the future. Okay, so the biggest concern that I have is how much time I spend generating and regenerating promotional content for our library. That's for our website, on social media, um, for print promotion and physical displays, and for a new LCD screen that we just acquired. Um, these things are definitely separate, and in other libraries, different staff might be assigned to different tasks related to organizing and public relations, but in this library, it's mostly me. So an important question to ask also at this juncture is why bother with all of this extra work? Um, we've been able to show on our campus that um, these promotions and this time that we spend on social media and the time that we spent redesigning our website have made a big impact in our um, usage stats and our in-the-door stats. So we've seen the door cut count increase exponentially in the past two fiscal years. Um, and we've just watched the library grow as a place that people really want to be on campus. Um, so in order to honor our mission and continue to grow those services, we think that having that consistent voice is really important. OK, so what I'm looking for um, seems simple. I'm looking for template-based signage so that anyone in the library who wants to make a sign can make a sign that follows our branding guidelines. Um, I want an easy approval process for those templates and graphics so that our dean knows what's going on. Um, I want content that transfers and translates easily between formats and platforms. Um, those include displays, print promotion, and online graphics. Um, in other words, a consistent brand. Uh, I want a timeline so that we have things planned out and we don't have to drop everything to get something done at a moment's notice, um, even when it's a really good idea. And I uh, would like to reduce waste and save resources um, by printing less, using free software, and making the most of social media. Uh, and that all sounds really easy, um, but here's what I still need to do to get there. Obviously, more foundational effort, more time uh, to build more templates, um, just getting all of that stuff ready so that I can present it to the rest of the crew here. Um, and I need buy-in, so I need to be able to promise them that it's worth their time and um, people have emotional connections to sometimes to their design processes. Um, so I have to overcome those feelings and um, make sure that people feel confident and understand the point of moving toward a more consistent and cohesive voice. Uh, then buy in for an approval process. Um, I'm thinking that I need a little bit more um, of a concrete approval process, maybe outside my own building. So getting more stakeholders in administration with the various different people who work together to plan and um, promote events on campus. 
And then, uh, of course, I just need more assessment, so a better understanding of how my audience of students mainly, but um, also staff and faculty and community, um, how these people interact with promotions of services and resources, and you know, just like the question of, is it worthwhile to create all these printed paper advertisements? Um, that's the way it's always been done, but these are the times when we need to push forward and, and ask those questions. Okay, so let me share a little bit more about Sol Ross. Um, the Brian Wildenthal Memorial Library is um, here at Sol Ross State University based in Alpine. It's a, far, a town in far west Texas. I should have put a nice map on this slide. Uh, with a population of about 7,000. Um, if you can visualize Texas, El Paso is over on the western point, and we are three hours east of El Paso. Um, then if you think about Austin, which is kind of in the middle of Texas, we're six hours west of Austin. So we're really kind of in the middle of nowhere in Texas. Um, if you've heard of Big Bend National Park, we're two hours north of that. And um, we're 30 miles down the road from the internationally known arts community of Marfa, which people tend to know more than Alpine. So we at Solras are designa designated as a Hispanic serving institution, meaning more than 25% of our total undergraduate full-time equivalent enrollment is made up of Hispanic students. Um, we serve a population of about 2,400 students and many of these are first generation. Uh, that means that something we find is that library staff spends a lot of time with our students making sure they are generating skills that they need for um, those early composition classes and other core course, coursework, and generally providing an additional outlet for student and moral support on campus. And um, I think for me, it's just been an adjustment coming from the public library world to um, this education heavy um, job where there's a lot more um, hands-on and a lot more one-on-one -on -one support with students, um, which is great. I never thought I'd like doing it so much, actually. Um, so Willemthal Library is the only university library on um, this campus and on the other three campuses that we serve. So we've got a staff of 11 serving under our dean, um, and with the dean included, there are four reference librarians, each with drastically different roles outside of reference service. So administrative and leadership, technical services, discovery services, and then education and outreach. Um, so a few big areas of current interest that pertain to our library and make sense to bring up here are that we are the sole library, but there are three other campuses located in Del Rio, Uvalde, and Eagle Pass um, with students who are also entitled to use our resources. In that great description of the physical geography of Texas, um, it's important to note that Del Rio, Uvalde, and Eagle Pass are um, at minimum three hours driving distance from Alpine. So those students are not driving to use our library physically, but using our library mostly online um, and connecting using Blackboard Collaborate and a lot of those um, virtual services. So these students have access to resources at um, a junior college, but that recipro reciprocal agreement is not very formalized. Um, so we serve these students at Solras, Del Rio, Uvalde, and Eagle Pass, but outreach is definitely lacking to those students. This will eventually mean that our brand and our voice as a library and as a university needs to grow to be strong enough to support itself in these other locations um, so that the services that we provide mean the same thing in the four different geographic locations. The other thing is that we also house the archives of the Big Bend, um, which is its own entity in a way, but not on any kind of budget. So it's really important uh, and a, truly the gem of our institution, in my opinion, uh, but they lack the time and resources to really be the best that they can be. So um, that's just a, another thing that we're thinking about, especially as funding becomes more and more precarious. And then of course, for me specifically, uh, the drastically different role that I play as a librarian is 
the education piece. So, um, the information desk will be closed in 15 minutes. If you need assistance, please contact the librarian now. The library will provide you with minutes. Sorry about that. I meant to. <laughs> it's 4.15. Um, that's going to happen potentially two more times while I'm talking, so I will uh, try to keep an eye on the clock and maybe mute it next time. That's okay, as long as you don't get kicked out before you're done. I will not. I, I warned them that I would stay after they turned off the lights. Okay. Okay, so, um, so kind of in the why bother category, um, I think that and in the other duties as assigned category, I ended up, even though my role is education and I spend a lot of time in the classroom and a lot of time um, working with faculty to develop um, ways to incorporate information literacy into assignments, um, the kind of opposite of the spectrum is all this PR and outreach and events planning and programming that I'm doing. Um, and I think that this is such an important aspect of my job, especially in terms of getting the faculty um, to answer my emails and to do the things that I want them to do with information literacy, is just growing the popularity of the library and making the library a place where people want to be and where people feel comfortable. So sometimes we just do these things because nobody else is doing them, obviously. And um, oddly enough, my dean is, um, a librarian who's she's really inter interested in design and graphics and um, she wishes that she could be doing all of this stuff but she's so bogged down with administrative stuff um, but she started a design blog called librarian design chair um, and I'll share a link to it as well when I share these slides um, because it's been a really great source for me as I've once I found out that she was in charge of it too um, she doesn't and, she doesn't run it anymore, but um, it made me really want to ensure that any kind of graphics or promotion that I was doing was like really up to her level. Um, but I started doing all of this stuff when I first got to this library because I took over the social media accounts. And I started by just kind of building cohesion between our different platforms. So we're on Facebook and Instagram and a little bit on Twitter, but it's not really a Twitter community out here. Um, but I showed how I could grow the popularity of that, like the followership and the engagement online, and then kind of leveraged those numbers to show that, okay, if we can do this online and increase clicks into resources and clicks into, um, services you know on our website um, that it could potentially work in the library too if we were kind of having a cohesive voice and a brand okay so obviously in terms of also context and background we have to do research because we're librarians um, so some of the things that have been really helpful for me are um, learning more about workflow mapping uh, I joke that I'm like definitely a public services librarian because I'm not nearly as detail oriented as any of my tech services counterpoints. So I have to work really hard at doing things like um, workflow and creating charts and using Excel and all that stuff. And that's just a personal problem. But um, other things that have been really important are the um, Solros branding guide, of course, because that helps us to decide what the library's specific branding guide will look like. Um, this article in um, College and Research Libraries News, we used it last, um, excuse me. We used it last semester, our acquisitions librarian retired after 26 years and we use this five-step process to go through several of her um, processes to modernize them and it, it really worked well so um, I'm using it again in this process and I, I definitely think if there's anything that you're looking to increase efficiency with definitely check out this article by Orna and Moorfield um, and then of course this marketing um, and special marketing for special and academic libraries um, 
it's a really good source book, but the scope is a little bit bigger than what I'm looking for right now. Um, but I have used it quite a bit and it's just part of our collection. So the actual building a workflow part is kind of a, a big chunk of what I've been doing. And like I said, with that source book, it's really easy to get bogged down in the moving parts of library marketing and promotion, and then even how that fits into a broader organization if you're part of a broad, broader organization like I am. Um, so with different aspects of promotion requiring slightly different workflows, I'm finding that I still have a lot to do before I get everything ironed out. Um, considering planned displays, planned events, and planned resource promotion or services service launches, um, you can kind of start to see the workflow coming together. Uh, but of course, the keyword is planned. And so much of the work that I do, and probably all of you um, do, is not planned. So it really points to the original problem. But building a more solid workflow for the things that I can control should free up time for the things that inev inevitably come up last minute. And um, so here's where I am with that workflow. First of all, planning backwards in advance. Uh, this semester, I mapped out displays month by month using an Excel spreadsheet, um, in, actually in my OneDrive on SharePoint. So I picked some themes and input titles and call numbers of books that would be transferred you know, from the general collection to displays. And then I brainstormed how to connect those resources and services to those displays. Um, it saved me so much time. It's only February, but it's already really been a high return on my investment of just a few hours on a Sunday at the uh, Sunday reference desk shift. So this I also felt is funny because it's kind of an old school way of doing things is planning out a physical book display, but it's helped me shape the whole academic calendar year in terms of what I want to promote and when. Um, and there's also a how, but we'll talk about that later. Um, but just connecting actually the physical books to uh, all these virtual resources and programming that's um, coinciding as we move along throughout the year. So in terms of planning backwards, it's important for me to know how much padded time I need to add to promoting an event, a display, a resource, or a service uh, because of the other workflows that exist on campus. So in my case, if I want to have posters hung all over campus, I have to get them printed, which means I need at least 24 hour lead time to get something to the print shop. Um, and I have to have them ready and distributed to my student workers and the residential living office within two weeks of the planned promotion period to give everyone you know, the time that they need to do what they need to do. And I also have to have my posters stamped by our campus activities office once they're printed but before they can be distributed so i have to add in time to walk <laughs> posters over to that office before final distribution um, so that sounded like a lot of work right so knowing your audience is something that i've been working on and i've come to question you know like a lot of times that's a lot of work just to get stuff hung up on a wall so who's even reading these signs um, but through anecdotal evidence, through talking to um, the assistant director of residential living, I've learned that, yeah, people are talking about these things that they read on the um, community boards over in the residence halls. And there are 1,100 students who live in those halls. So advertising in the residence halls is worth the extra effort because it seems to really work. Um, but maybe advertising on the event boards that are located like all throughout campus uh, might not be worth my effort unless I'm really doing a big push for some kind of um, big annual event like the open house that we had on Valentine's Day where we did just paper the whole campus um, and we had a nice turnout. Um, so that's kind of um, leads into knowing your cogs, and that's an affectionate term for the people who make the workflow um, work for the library. So collaborating with people like the assistant director over in Res Life or um, the manager of the print shop who um, 
the more that I talk to her and poke her, you know, she's convinced me to save paper by um, creating bookmark advertisements and printing on eight and a half by 11 flyers rather than tabloid size, which is 11 by 17. Um, because, you know, the argument is that it's still a flyer, even if it's only on a regular eight and a half by 11 sheet. So connecting with these different cogs um, has definitely increased my efficiency. And there's just the human <laughs> aspect of it. So appealing to the kindness of these people and, and really listening to what they have to say and trying not to reinvent the wheel while still trying to build a more efficient workflow. Of course, um, I'm going to show you on Canva in a little bit what I'm doing so you can get an idea of what we're trying to achieve. Um, but the main simplification I'm working on right now is just to work with standards. So I'm talking about templates, but also about shapes. Um, I really like squares because they look nice on our social media and they don't look too bad on our LCD screen. Um, you just center the square right in the middle of that big rectangle. And um, I am trying to kind of figure out how I feel about putting squares on promotional flyers, but um, I'm working on that and probably just would really increase efficiency if I could just give into the square all the time. Um, I think it's important to start with, <laughs> this seems so sometimes more obvious to, the, to some people than others, but one thing that I do is that I build a lot of graphics in like PowerPoint or Canva. Um, I used to work in Microsoft Paint a lot, so you don't have to have fancy tools. Um, Microsoft Paint has a lot of pretty good capability. Um, as long as you're starting with the graphic that, the biggest graphic first. So the thing that you need to be the biggest, like your flyer that needs to be printed, it needs to be the highest resolution. And then you can kind of cut pieces out of it and work down from there. Um, but I can't turn an Instagram post into a flyer because everything's just going to be distorted and um, not pretty. So that's just a simple tool. Always start with the biggest one. Okay, also saving to the cloud. So like I said, we're gonna look at Canva and SharePoint um, because I'm trying really hard to better organize my digital assets so that the programs I'm doing every year, um, I can keep coming back to them and not having to rebrand programs over and over again every year or each semester. Um, the cloud service has been really helpful for me because I move around the library building a lot. I forget my thumb drives. Um, so I can access what I'm working on from anywhere um, and even on my phone. So your organization doesn't have to pay for an expensive service like SharePoint. Um, you can use things like Google Docs or even um, Canva's free storage for me has been enough so far. Um, I haven't had to upgrade because of that. So of course, the last part of building a workflow is following that workflow. Um, it's never an A to B or a linear process. Um, so we follow the workflow so that we can maintain it and continue to refine it. Okay, so before I go over to Canva, um, more about graphics would be just like the keep it simple approach is definitely where it's at and why I intend to transition all of my graphics to templates moving forward. Um, and if you've never heard of Canva, it's a cloud-based software with drag and drop functionality that allows you to make some really nice signage and graphics. Um, and it, they offer paid accounts, but so far we don't have one. Um, I actually just have a free individual account and then some of the other staff um, have individual accounts for the other things that they do um, with Canva. But an institutional account is only $12 a month, so it's not, it wouldn't be crazy, and I would think that if you were working with a team, it might really be worth the money. Um, so the greatest part about Canva is that they allow you to upload your own um, images. So to get the most out of it, I've uploaded our logo and brand mark sets to the website, and um, I also use the hex codes to find the exact colors that I want. So you can change 
Your attention, please. There it is again. The circulation desk will be closing in 15 minutes. Please gather any materials you wish to check. We're pausing for the announcement to finish. <laughs> yes. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so I love that you can um, custom, you can like take something that's existing and change all the colors so that it just fits with exactly what you're looking for. And I'll show that to you in just a second. Um, our school colors are red and gray. So luckily our university's branding guide um, that came out last December, they chose some complementary colors. So not everything that I do has to be red and gray because just really intense um, but I am one of the most universal adopters of these secondary colors so I try to do everything um, on the up and up following what the university is asking us to do so one of my favorite things um, well I'll talk about that when we get that when we get in there okay so what I'm gonna do So bringing over Canva to show you guys. So um, if you haven't used it before, it, when you, I'm logged in already, but it will give you the opportunity to create a design and it gives you lots of different um, size options, which I think is great, but it also will let you um, create custom designs. So recently I made um, some lights for the whole university. I made these uh, like, sliding signs that go in some plastic holders that the university already owned. Um, so I was able to build custom dimensions so that the sign would print perfectly. Um, and it's amazing that a librarian can do that and we don't have to outsource it to somebody else. Um, but for the library, one of the things, um, so like here's an example of a square. And I think that my favorite tool is that you can come in to any design that you've made previously and you can clone it. So you can clone something and just make a new thing. Um, and somewhere around here, I have all other nine tips um, from EBSCO for interpreting media. But um, yes, so I really just wanted to show you how we, how kind of it's evolving and how I think I'm getting a little bit more um, uniform with trying to follow this workflow that I'm setting out for myself. Um, and what I think that we're really just going to move toward is utilizing our um, collection of Flickr photos, which is a new thing for us. Um, so we recently got a new director of publications and news, and he has a fabulous photo collection for us. Um, so I only take photos with my iPhone, but he luckily just is everywhere on campus taking photos all the time and uploading them for us. So I have this great library of photos that are available um, to use for these um, promotions. And what I really like about them is that students get excited because they can see themselves um, on these posters when they're um, out and about. And I've actually heard good feedback of students being, uh, I was worried at first that they weren't gonna like it, but they do like it and they feel like, okay, I'm part of this community now. Um, and there I am, look, I'm on a poster. So it's going really well. Um, and then I guess I can show you also with all these different logos that you have. Um, this could certainly be more organized. And then the other thing is, um, okay, so over in SharePoint, I hesitated to show you guys SharePoint because it's so, this is so personal for uh, my organization, um, but at least you can see my file naming system. Um, so in outreach and promotion events, um, you can just see it's helpful more 
you know, the more organized that I am, the better. And one of my time management things that I've been doing is just setting aside time. Um, I'm not, I know, I took a class on this in library school. You're supposed to just get in the habit of putting things in the right folder at the right time. Um, but I'm a big save to desktop kind of gal. Um, but what I can promise myself to do is put those things in the correct folders at a special time. So on Monday mornings, I usually look forward to the clearing off my desktop time of the day when I put everything where it's supposed to go. Um, and that's I tell my students, it's just about what what, fi what finding what works for you in terms of research management and um, organizing. Okay, what else was I gonna show you over here? Okay, I think that's it. I'll show you, let's see. Okay, so that was kind of the the back end of, or you know, the behind the scenes of what I'm doing. But what I'm doing is um, just trying to compile and internally publicize our local style guide. Um, and that's based off the university branding guidelines. Um, I've also got a philosophy that I'm not changing based off this workflow. And I thought that um, it might be interesting to share that like, um, I have this philosophy about social media that I think even though there are a lot of great tools to manage social media now, um, that I still want it to be organic. And I call it my social media plus mental health philosophy. And that is what um, keeps me doing it and keeps me coming back to it. So I use posting to social media as an opportunity to get up and leave my office and walk around the library and see what's happening and see what people are doing. Um, and sometimes I take photos and save them for later. Or sometimes I post right in the moment, but um, I don't think I'm going to change that part of my workflow because it really does just um, kind of helps me to engage with the people who are in the library at any given time when I need to go up and get up and get out of my office. Um, the other thing, of course, is talking about time management with all of this. And uh, I thought it was funny in the blurb for this talk that I mentioned creative time as if we all have like a daily appointment in our Outlook calendars that's like creative time, um, which we don't, most of us. Um, some of us might be lucky. But I tend to save a lot of this kind of work for when I'm at the reference desk. Um, so much of the other work that I do, working with um, faculty and writing proposals for um, like grant funding and all this stuff that requires a lot of thinking, I like to do that in my office. Um, but I can do social media and I can play on Canva when I don't mind being interrupted. So at the reference desk is really when I get a lot of my um, like outreach and programming stuff done. Okay, so we've talked a lot about what I'm doing, but our concerns for the future are, of course, to um, stick the, to these habits, uh, not to drop everything at once. Um, I'm really trying to stick to the schedule. So even if I notice something on the L LCD screen is out of date, um, when I go to the restroom, because I have to pass by it when I go to the restroom, I'm not gonna stop what I'm doing and fix it then, but I'm just going to wait to that scheduled block of time when I'm on the reference desk and fix it on the reference desk. And that is hopefully going to train me to be a lot more proactive about it. Um, also, we just know that our university branding is going to continue to evolve. So um, <laughs> the new R example seems so silly on my slide, but recently, um, our, all of our logos for the entire university were tweaked slightly, but just enough to where um, we're going to have to change everything again from what we changed last December. So there's a lot of stuff going on in our administration that's kind of trickling down to us. Um, so there's a fear about you know the, what we're doing in the library and how we can make sure that we are um, 
doing our best to be, you know, part of the university branding, but also um, we're so afraid of just like doing the same work over and over again. So um, that's an issue that's kind of coming up. And then growing those graphics into our bigger service footprint um, outside of Alpine is going to be an issue as we move forward and continuing to just assess this workflow as we move forward. So to recap, I, today I presented um, our ongoing case study. Uh, it just seems to have led to so many more questions than answers. Uh, I've talked about some of the progress that I've made and I showed you Canva and kind of where I am in graphic creation and then um, talked about what's gonna happen in the future and how we just don't know. Uh, it feels like when I put this pres presentation together that I just started whining, uh, but know that it was really therapeutic for me and I, it's great that I still have a lot of work to do. Um, so thank you all for coming on this journey with me. And thanks to the Big Talk from Small Libraries Conference and thank you Krista for organizing everything, um, especially when you're just getting over an illness. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I'm happy to answer any questions. I made it almost to the end of the day. Um, great. Thank you so much, Betsy. No, that was awesome. The I was very much appreciative of all your organization tips and everything about how to do, because there are so many things. Um, and this is what's great about your presentation, too, that it's not just for the academics. Um, everything you're doing applies to any kind of library that's going to need to organize all these different places that you're doing things and how you're trying to market things and how you're trying to brand. And like you said, they just slightly tweaked our logo and now we got to redo everything. Um, I didn't think you were whining at all. It's very understandable, everything you're doing. <laughs> um, we do have a couple of some questions that came in. If anybody does have any questions, type them into the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface and we'll um, get Betsy to answer them for you. Um, someone has a question here and I. I think you may have mentioned this, but um, I think we might want a little more explanation. Um, do you print these posters yourself or do you take them somewhere to print them for you? Um, or do you do some of, a little of both? I'm not... um, well, luckily for us, we, we just got these nice new Xerox printers. So my color printing um, has gone from zero capability to pretty high quality here in the library just in the past few weeks. Nice. Um, we do have a print shop on campus and um, so for those uh, if anything that I want on thicker cardstock or bigger format I have the the capability of using our print shop. Oversized posters or banners or things. Yes. They would have to do for you yeah. Uh, okay um uh, for a small community as Alpine is, do you advertise beyond the campus into the community for um, some of your events? We do. Um, it's actually our Facebook page is um, mostly community members and faculty. So we get a lot of um, engagement with community through Facebook. Um, but we do, uh, the local newspaper picks up many, many of the things that are going on at on the university campus, but especially in the library. So not a lot of students using Facebook then? No, they, the Instagram is definitely more popular with our students. Yeah. Snapchat is really, really popular, but um, I just can't get into Snapchat myself. So. I, don't, I don't know that it's very much something for marketing. It, it may just be one of those places you just don't. <laughs> It, yes, yeah. I'm looking for a student to be my ambassador into Snapchat, but I haven't found the right student yet. Absolutely. Um, there was a site you mentioned, so I want to know if you could share the link to the Librarian's Design Chair site that you mentioned. Yes, definitely. And um, it's very Googleable too, but when I um, give my slides to you, I'll make sure I have all of those additional resources. Oh, great. Okay, great. So you have all the links that were that anything that might be linkable. Um, you'll have it there. Great. Um, let's see. What do we have here? I'm just reading this one question here to see. Ah, okay. Uh, this is when you're working with a team. This is, yeah. How do you emphasize the need for using the templates or sticking to the brand when other team members want to be, quote, more creative? 
um, this person is needed to convince team members that they need to stick to the program of what we're doing, even though they might have some of their own ideas? Um, it's, it's a really sensitive process. Um, I previously worked for the Austin Public Library. Oh, there it is again. I'm sorry. Well, I hope they won't turn off um, Betsy's computer. She said she'd let them know she's there. <laughs> they promised they wouldn't. Um, so what I was saying is I worked at the Austin Public Library in Texas and um, during their big rebranding, so in their Office of Programs and Partnerships, um, and there was just the most amazing amount of pushback because if people were just worried they were losing their opportunities to be creative in the workplace. Um, I think here I've had a lot more success in um, the best way that I can say that, like the easiest way is just that you're, you're saying like, you don't have to do this. Um, I'm making it so easy for you so that it's just one less thing for you to do. Um, you're definitely going to come up against people who are creative and want to do what they think is creative. And um, luckily in Austin, I had a um, coworker who was willing to lay the hammer down. Uh, and it might be that I have to <laughs> be the person who lays the hammer down eventually. But um, so far, so good here. It's it's a hard thing to give advice on because it really is just going to depend on um, your relationship with that person who really wants to be creative. And okay. sometimes you've got to take that tough love approach. And then where is the where is it being dictated from the brand or the template as well? Um, for example, is it your your university or your city? If you're a public library, says everything that you put out that relates to you has to have this logo or this header on a web page or something um, because you are um, representing us you know the bigger picture but then beyond that you can get more creative with your specific information potentially but you still need to work within the guidelines and so it may depend if there's some um pass the buck kind of thing where you can say that like here in nebraska we as a state agency we have to have certain things at the top and bottom of our pages no questions asked because we're a state agency in between those two things you can do whatever you need to to do what you're doing for your agency um but it wasn't didn't come from us it came from above yes and I, that's it it's great to be able to blame policies sometimes we as librarians know that and i think also finding that space to let people um, have that creativity in the middle of those two guidelines is really important too because you know we want people to like their jobs sure oh yeah and to have fun doing these creative things yeah um i think also the, the pushing the fact that this is for the the brand of the library this is something we've all could we, if they're all involved together in creating this picture um, of what the library is going to um, how the library is going to present themselves you know giving them the power empowering them to be part of the process too might be helpful definitely um, we're part of something bigger help to do it you know maybe if they can if you can ask them well together let's create something and then we all have to make sure we follow it yeah, it is a difficult situation. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any other uh, questions for Betsy here before we wrap up? Type into the question section there. Um, I will say for myself personally, I have used Canva before as well, and I also highly recommend it. It's such a slick, as you said, you can be, a, you know, I'm sure people who go to school for this and schools that teach this don't like me to say it, but you can be a graphic designer without having the training. Oh, it's surprising how nice it is. <laughs> yeah, some of the things that I've seen some libraries and some colleagues of mine come out with, and I just assumed it must have been their PR person or their uh, their communications department that, you know, an expert graphic designer they hired and they're like, nah, I just use this software and I click and drop things and it, it's got a lot of that built in knowledge in there for you. So, yeah, and free, as you said. All right. Well, it doesn't look like anybody has typed any last minute desperate questions for you, but um, you can contact Betsy at her, her library if you do have any.
Sorry, just in my ears. I have a little coughing. Oh, no worries. All right. So I think that we'll um, wrap it up for the day. Thank you so much, Betsy, for finishing things up with us here. Thank you, um, Krista. But we have one last thing. A name of the site that you said your director manages about graphics? Oh, that's Librarian Design Share. That's the one that the previous person mentioned and that will be included in the um, slides when they get sent to us. Yes. Yep. <coughs> All right, so that will wrap it up for this year's Big Talk from Small Libraries.